Welcome back everyone to today's Destiny 2 build video that I have to show. This week I've been playing around with the new Glacier Inheritance mod that basically provides you with a super stasis energy back upon super kills and it got me thinking, firstly why did Bungie bring this in when stasis is already strong, especially with the super alone and secondly how can we make a already strong mod even more stronger with our subclass and additional mods included. The Hunter's Silence and Squall ability has great duration, tracking and damage against a large group of enemies and considering how wide this AoE is, it makes the new mod even more effective at giving you back guaranteed super energy after it's finished. Add in some whispers that can help boost super regen and the energy converter mod as well for even more super and you can chain back to back super and be a pain to deal with in both PvE and PvP. This on the basic scale is what we'll be going with and I'll be breaking this down into simple numbers and tips that will benefit you greatly in making the build work for your playstyle. Not only that, but you can also take what is made available and use it on your Titan or Warlock as well, so the synergy being provided can be shared all around. Before we head in, if you enjoyed the video then do leave a like and a sub for more content like this in the future, I would really appreciate it. With that out of the way, the subclass we'll be using is the Hunter's Revenant class with Glacier Grenades for crowd control. Aspect of Shatter to destroy our Glacial Grenades and Grim Harvest that will provide the Stasis Shards that we can use to regen our melee on the go. The focus of the build is to build up your super quickly and to then activate and gain the bonuses of Glacier Inheritance but to do this you must expand on your subclass perks so that they work alongside our Exotic, Frosties and other additional mods. For this to be sped up and work as intended you will need to have the Whisper of Bonds that will provide you super energy upon frozen target kills. Whispers of Shards that will further boost your grenade region upon destruction of stasis crystals and the Whispers of Fissures that will help with spreading the damage of stasis crystals via damage and AoE. I found that the following mods are the best choices to stick with since we are going to be relying on the addition of frozen targets who once shattered by us will net us a hefty amount of super energy back thanks to the Whisper of Bonds artifact. From there we will also be netting a boost in grenade energy from the Whisper of Shards artifact which on its own is good but with the added on effect of Frosties and Demolitionists means we can have a much faster grenade cooldown accessible as long as we keep our Zodic going which will always be the case. The most important thing to take though is the Grim Harvest aspect which will not only provide you with stages of crystals that can regen your melee but also it comes with two slots for adding in more Whispers. This is important as without the aspect you'll be left with either the base aspect you have or Winter Shrouds and neither of them will provide you with an extra slot. On top of that, the aspect works well with this setup as the melee option can activate the whispers as well if you shatter your targets with them, which gives you another option of building up your super and adding in the focusing strike mod which can also help with boosting ability energy all round. In summary, the following aspects and whispers are the go to setup that you should go for when building the set from the ground up, as you need to activate your whispers of bonds a lot to simply build up your super quickly. This method here is the best in terms of achieving that. For weaponry, the only thing I decided that would be best for the build was to have a grenade launcher with demolitionists to build up a grenade quickly and then having two master web weapons to produce orbs of power for faster super cooldown. Although it would be wise to have a weapon that has fresh on it or use the bad juju to build up your super quickly, it's actually not that needed if you plan to use the energy converter mod as shown later. My primary for example is a Masterwork Friction Fire SMG that you can get from the Crow from doing his available hunts and my role comes with the Drop Mag, Killing Wind and Rampage perks. The weapon is a fantastic ad clearer that I highly recommend you go get and is a very steady and pinpoint accurate weapon in whatever environments it's in. Since Close Quarters will be playing a big part on the build, SMGs and the hand cannons will be the best fit for you to equip and use throughout. Like I mentioned though, if you want to boost your super energy much faster then having the bad juju is a good spot to pick from or having a weapon with your fresh perk in order to really help out since it will appear on certain legendaries that will leave you room to slot in whatever exotic you like. For secondary, I'm using the All Wings Mar with spike grenades, fill prep and demolitioners and this will be the main weapon you're going to be using a lot to build up your grenades and then your super. Grenade launchers to me are the best secondary weapons to have for any PvE content since the perk pools are very small and easier to gain what you want and in terms of damage and safety they are the best across the board but only if you can land your shots. Like my previous build that used the Salvager's Salvo grenade launcher, the weapon will be used to build up grenade energy and also destroy glacier grenades when I'm not able to 
but mainly will be used as a enforcing weapon to make sure our needed abilities is fully topped off. Now if you are a new light player and you want this weapon or lol, you can get it from Iron Banner as a drop, but considering how anti new light that game mode is, I would highly recommend you get the Salvager's Salvo instead if you have the Season of the Chosen Season Pass. That grenade launcher is worth getting with the multitude of perks it can roll, especially the chain reaction perk that is great for taking out a large group of enemies in one explosive go. For heavy, I've chosen to use the Code Duella rocket launcher with import amplifier and lasting impressions, and this will be handy for increased DPS against bosses and ultras alike. As rocket launchers have gotten a big buff, now is a great time to fully use them for their max potential against bosses, or generally anything. And this role here is the must have gold roll to get if you really want to do some impressive damage. Swords are still recommended in terms of quick burst DPS, but rockets now, they can rival them with larger and more indirect damage than ever before. For stats, your main focus will always be the discipline stat area as we need to boost grenade regen speed to constantly activate whispers of bombs. But for this area, you don't need to go overboard with it if you have the demo perk on the weapon and if you're using the Whispers of Shard for further regeneration. A good spot to aim for would be the 60 to 70 area for a 51 second to 45 second cooldown. When you take in the other mods and perks that will reduce the stat further, it comes up to around half of that, which is excellent for what we need to aim for. Do also remember, as long as we have Frosties active in the background, we can pretty much spam grenades back to back and thus build up energy quickly while wiping out large groups of enemy in one go quite nifty for backgrounds or gambit. From here, depending on how your armor stats are rolled, I would then recommend you put some points into the intellect area, since the whole point of the build is to build it super quickly. Now like I mentioned earlier, if you have the energy converter mod and some charged up mods to boost how many stacks of charge with light you can carry, then you won't need to put in any more points into this area, since this will net you more over time compared to your stat alone. For those that don't have the mod, then it's best you invest into the 60 to 70 ranges for a 4 minute 18 second to 4 minute 7 second cooldown, which should be fairly enough to naturally build your super up. This area shouldn't be that much of a worry to you, as you have other options available that will help improve this area for you. Simply having a massive weapon is pretty much good enough, as this will further aid in building up over time. The rest of the stats now can be moulded and built into further depending on what you like to go and invest in. Resilience and recovery are always going to be an important factor in build creation so aiming for the 50-60 to 60 area is best for your survival. Your mobility doesn't need to be quite high even though this is the trademark stat for our hunter's dodge ability. However, with mods such as distribution around and frosty's exotic perk in action, this won't need to be the case thankfully. And then strength is just strength and no focus is required for this area. Although we do plan to use the stack quite a bit, Frosty and the Grim Harvest aspect will easily fill this role in without the further sacrifice required. Now with the stats, weapon and subclass section covered and broken down as to why we are using them, the next section will cover how this will all play out with pros and cons. For starters, let's take a look at the mods we are using first. So for head, we are using Discipline, Grenade Launcher and Refinder and Blast Rages mod. R, we're using Discipline and Stacks and Stacks mod. Chest, we're using Discipline, Concussive Damage Times 2 and NG Converter mod. Leg, we're using Recovery and Supercharge mod. Cloak, we're using Distribution and Glacier Inheritance mod. When it comes down to the power of Stasis in any environment it's used in, Stasis is overwhelmingly powerful for any scenarios it's against, from Boss DPS, Add Clearer, or Shutting Down Zones. Anything you can think of, Stasis will be able to fit right into it. With the Revenant subclass, this class tends to be the most lacked class to use when you want to be quick in damage but also be a pain and prevent stuff from getting in your way, which comes from the Silence and Scroll ability. The Super, unlike the others, have great tracking, damage and AoE over time, and is one of the best ad clearers to use in game from a solo to group perspective. As the Mod Glacier Inheritance provides around 20-25% to super energy, back to the user, depending on how many stasis super kills are made, these two, hand in hand, make the perfect couple for end game where you're against a whole group of enemies in one go, or even PvP if you can pull it off. But how exactly does this work? To make this build work in your favour, you're going to need to use your shatter ability a lot on group enemies so you can build up your super over time and overall max it out within a few minutes. 
For this, you're going to be using the Glacier Grenades as they have great AoE range and shatter damage when combined with the Crit Whispers. From there, all you'll be simply doing in the first half is finding groups of enemies, grenade them, and then shatter them for the bonuses in Grenade Regen and Super. This is pretty much what you're going to be doing for a bit while also utilizing your melee every now and then. Once you gain your super, it's best you also build up your charge with light stacks so that after the super ends, you can utilize your energy converter mod for a 10 to 50% free super energy, but only if you have this mod available. If not, then you can use your super straight away and if done correctly you should be rewarded back a chunk of super as a reward of executing it. With the energy converter mod on top of that, you can get overall 70% super energy back and thus repeat as many times as you like. This build is rather simple and doesn't require extensive timing to pull this off, unless you use the energy converter mod. A build like this can be useful in endgame content, but only for content where you're against a large force of enemies at once if you really want to make it work. Prime examples like Gambit, Nightfall Ordeals, Raids for certain sections, and Battlegrounds specifically will allow the build to shine. One issue though that I and many other people have come across when using the mod is that it won't always work at times and this seems to be because of how the mod defines super status kills. The tests are still ongoing but the mod with any status class can at times not work and this can be an annoyance for some who really invest in such a build for the fun of it. It seems like interacting with the mod is 50-50 as to when it will work and also when it won't work. Overall, the mod and build is great for those that love the aspect of using stasis and the super a lot for whatever content you have in mind. And if you're someone who loves the kind of stasis in PvP, then you're gonna have a great time with it. Sadly, as the mod is quite finicky at times as to how it likes to work, it won't always grant you bonuses that are promised, which can be seen as annoying if you plan to use such a setup in certain environments. This shouldn't make you not want to use the build overall, but given the choice, I would prefer to you not actually use the mod and actually go ahead and use something else if I know it will guarantee you work 100% of the time. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny and Tiger 2 content if you dig the type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you on the next one.